So it's Monday, and as promised, I am back today with another Tahoe video for you guys. So today we're gonna to be covering something on the interior that I'm actually very excited about. Once again, for anybody who's been following the build on this thing from the beginning, um, I bought this Tahoe at auction, and it's actually gone over quite a transformation since I got it. The wheels, tires, stuff in the interior, the headlights, the badges, the taillights, everything's been covered in this playlist right above my head. So if you wanna go check that out to kind of get you know caught up to date, before you watch this video, you can go right ahead and do that. But today we're gonna to be working on the front seats. Now, a lot of you guys who have seen all those videos on this thing already, you know, I think one of like the first videos I did on this thing was cleaning the interior. And then followed by that, we redid the lower portion of the front seats as well as clean them because they were just in absolute terrible condition. All right, so before I kind of give you guys a down low and outline everything we're gonna be doing here today, we gotta to take a second and thank the seat shop because they sponsored this video and they supplied everything we're gonna be using to restore Tahiti's front seats to like new today. We also have a discount code, so wait towards the end of the video. I'm gonna kind of fill you guys in on that. And if you wanna go grab the same covers that I'm gonna be installing today, the seat foam, the heaters, everything, they have it on their website and you can use that coupon code to grab everything that I used. All right guys, so let's rewind about a year and a half. Anybody who's been following this series from the beginning, you know, I think one of like the first or second videos I put out on this thing was the interior cleaning or the redoing of the seats. First we did the carpet, then I pulled the seats out, we redid the bottom and we cleaned the back ones and we cleaned kind of the seat backs. You can see now the back of the seat here totally needs to be replaced. At the time I did the bottoms, this was only ripped open I think that much. Now it's completely screwed. So we're gonna be replacing the backs on both seats, even though that one isn't ripped open, it's still cracking and the leather's kind of faded down there. So you guys remember, I used this vinyl thing I got off of eBay, it was like $70. I used the same thing on both seats. And at the time, I was happy with it. It was cheap, it looked way better than the neglected, dirty, filthy, ripped open leather that was in here from the start. And I pretty much installed it relatively easily. I actually used the video from the seat shop to do it and all was well, I was happy with it. Well, a year and a half later, 232,000 miles on the Tahoe right now, when I put them in, they had like 210. So we have about 22,000 miles on this lower cover. You could see it's already starting to rip open on the side here and on the top of the bolster. Plus, I just absolutely hate the way it feels. Since it wore in, it kind of loosened up and it just has this like rubbery, kind of like plumber's van feeling and I really don't like it. Granted, there are different kinds of vinyl you could get. eBay, $70. This is probably the lowest of the low, cheapest quality they could find. Uh, my Corbeau seats that I have in the Camaro, those are actually vinyl and they pretty much look and feel like leather. So this is by no means a quality product that I want to keep in here. And thanks to the seat shop, we are going to finally get to replace this with real leather. We're gonna be fixing the back with real leather and we're also gonna address the seat heater that burnt out. Because you remember when I replaced the bottom, I found out my lower pad was burnt out. I didn't have a replacement at the time, so I just threw it together the way it is. They also supplied me with a brand new seat foam on the bottom, so we're gonna get that swapped out. And as for the headrest and the armrest, we're leaving these alone because these are actually in like perfect condition and there's really no need to change them. We are, however, gonna be cleaning the seat belts. I know I kind of missed it. I put it on the list to do it eventually, never got around to it. Well, today when we have the covers off, we're gonna be cleaning both of the seat belts. All right, so I'm just gonna go out on the limb and assume we all wanna know what's inside the box. That is new car smell in a box. Oh yeah. So here's one of the seat backs. You can tell it just looks so much nicer than that cheap vinyl. It's soft as hell. Plenty of padding behind the leather. Then we have a couple of bottoms. After just feeling that vinyl, you can tell there's just a massive difference. It's smooth, it's soft. It smells absolutely freaking amazing. So we got our two seat bottoms, we got our two seat backs, and then they also sent a brand new lower cushion for the driver's side. 
Mine's all flattened on this side here. Then on top of that, oh, they actually sent me, they sent me both seat heaters, driver and passenger. So both sides are gonna be getting brand new heating pads, back of the seat, bottom of the seat. My driver's side was the only side that was out, but they went and sent me both. So both front seats here, they're gonna be pretty much brand new. New seat heaters, um, new cushion on the driver's side, because the passenger side doesn't really get sitting that much and the cushion is actually in really good condition. Driver's side is just kind of flat, and that's usually the side you're going to want to replace, especially if you're going through the trouble to do all this. Definitely want to replace that seat bottom. Now, I'm going to put a link to all this stuff down in the description, the cushion, the seat backs, the bottoms, the heating pad. So if you want to go pick up the exact stuff that I have right here, you could do that. But I do recommend getting in contact with the seat shop because if you give them your VIN, they'll be able to match your color exactly. So you don't have to worry about any confusion, any kind of eyeballing the color. You give them the VIN, they're going to be able to tell you the exact color you have, and they're going to send you the correct cover. Um, a little thing to know, these seat covers are made in the United States and they are guaranteed to perfectly match the color that's in your truck or SUV. So what I'm going to do is actually remove both seats. We'll bring them in the garage. That way we can uh, hop from one to the other and then we'll just install them when we're done. Uh, removing the seats is pretty simple. They're just held in place by four nuts. The front two are inverted torques as well as the back. I'm using an E20 socket for the front. Then we're just going to move the seat forward and we got the same kind of inverted Torx nuts in the back. For these two, I'm gonna use an E14. So with all the nuts out, we're just gonna flip this forward and we could just pop off the electrical connectors. All right, so I got both seats out of the Tahoe. Literally took maybe five minutes. I think we're gonna start on the driver one, being that's gonna be the most satisfying to replace. I'm gonna to try to kind of keep the seat mostly together for this. I think when I did this last time, I pulled the seat bracket away from the actual cushion, and I think I did more work than I had to. I'm not sure, but I'm gonna start by removing the plastic panels here. We're gonna have to remove the armrest. There's like a little clip inside of here and then the armrest will just kind of pop off. Get the rest of the plastic pieces off and then I'll start by seeing if I can separate the cushion uh, from the mainframe. And unfortunately, it looks like I am gonna have to remove the cushion from the whole assembly. Um, I've done this on like Express Vans and GMC Savannahs where you can actually change this with it in the car or you know in the van. But there's just so much going on with all the motors and everything. And you can see the seats actually, um, the old material is clamped kind of between the bracket there. And the same on the other side, actually more of that stuff goes underneath. So I can't actually pull this off and most likely the new cover is going to go on the same way. So all I'm going to do is come in here and remove these nuts right here. I believe these are 13 millimeter. And this is going to remove the actual cushion with the bracket and the springs away from the whole uh, seat bracket assembly. Now there are wires coming down through this bracket. I went through all this in my previous video. Basically, we need to unclip this harness from this top um, cushion bracket because we need to separate this away from this entire assembly. All right, like I said, it's been a while since I did this, but it all came back to me. And this harness actually stays on the bracket. So all I did was remove the bolts slide that forward you can see where the back slides into there and then i just tipped the cover forward and i was able to disconnect all the connections that were holding it so that harness remains untouched and it's simple enough just to drop that back down and plug those in once the new cover is on but as far as stripping it down this is basically all that needs to be done from here we're going to be able to change the back seat cover with it connected to the bracket we just need to remove the armrest the headrest pop the plastic off of the buckle there then we can undo the J-clip at the bottom 
can peel the whole cover off. For the bottom, it's pretty much the same thing, just a little less work. We just need to undo the J-clip in the back on the sides. This one looks like it already popped off. Who knows when that happened? And um, yeah, basically we just peel it off. We'll swap the foam out and get the new cover on there. So I think I'm gonna start on the bottom here. Be very, very careful because this metal is extremely sharp. So just pull these clips off. And literally the only thing holding this on are clips and Velcro. So this Velcro in here is what gives it that contour and kind of molds it to the cushion. And the uh, back of the cover itself has Velcro on there and it just hooks into this and that's what keeps everything nice and tight. You can see my seat foam has pretty much had it. This can just pull right off of here. Then we're left with our bracket with the springs, our harness still attached. And then for this piece, this is the actual heater. And you can see exactly where it burnt out. And I noticed this last time, I didn't have a replacement pad at the time. So I just put it back together without this working. So we're gonna start by getting our foam into position here. simply just sits on there like so. You see our Velcro strips that are gonna hold the cover. Now we need to install the seat heater. Now to install the pad, it has double-sided tape on here. We're just gonna peel this off and then this is gonna stick directly to the foam. I'm just gonna use the old one for reference here so we can get this positioned. So let's just make sure that's nice and pressed down. And we're ready for our leather. All right, so applying the cover can definitely be a little bit of a pain. It's gonna help to have two people when doing this, but I'm on my own. So I'm just gonna have to make do with what I got. So we're gonna start with the cover inside out, laying it over the cushion and start by kind of positioning it in the Velcro strips. From there, we'll just go around and peel it over the outside edges, and then we're gonna have to start getting those J-clips in. So you can see the seat covers come shipped inside out. And we're just gonna wanna see where the Velcro is and position that in this channel. I'm kind of lining up the center first to kind of give me a reference point for front and back, and then I'm gonna come in here and center the sides. And I gotta say, this smells just absolutely incredible. It's just new leather, new car smell. And just kind of setting it into the seams right now, it feels so much nicer than when I did the vinyl covers that just felt like complete plastic. So we're pretty much set in there. You see we kind of have a contour to the seat now and now we're going to start peeling the edges over the foam Now, as a point of reference, as you're pulling this over, 
you basically want the stitching to be at the edge of the seat. So you might have to actually undo the Velcro, pull it forward a little more until you kind of get the stitching along the edge and everything looking the way you want it. So what I'm doing now is just kind of pulling the cover over to make sure it's centered with the bracket. You can see this J clip back here. You want it to be, you know, kind of centered. That's going to give you a reference point as to if the cover is pulled a little more one way than the other. You can also see around the perimeter here, we pretty much have an even space uh, for that front clip. That's going to be the bad boy to get in there. That's going to be the most difficult for sure. But if we flip it over, it's pretty much where I want it to be. After we get the side set in and kind of pulled down, it'll probably pull a little bit tighter, but the seams are right where they need to be on the Velcro. Um, the stitching here, I'm pretty much happy with that's at the edge all the way around. It's not, you know, pulled over the bolster or pulled too far down. So right now we're going to flip this guy. And I think I'm going to start getting this front clip in place. Now this is where you're going to want two people because you're going to need somebody to kind of compress the cushion so you could peel this over. I did this myself last time. It was not fun. That's your home. You're too good for your home. So I'm going to start, I think, at the front here. I'm gonna actually put my knees on this to kind of compress this down. And we're gonna have to pull this over. And I guess you wanna really get the lip started in one spot. Then you could kind of roll it over It's really about getting it started, because once you get it started, you could just kind of roll on down the line and get the rest of it in. And there are little tabs on here, so as you clip this down, it's going to kind of dig into the plastic and you'll feel it kind of engage to keep it from popping off. Just like that. And just kind of another point of reference, looking at the stitching, it's pretty much in the same place on both spots, so we know our cover is actually in the middle. So same thing around the sides now. Just gonna roll it over. Got our heating pad connector. And before I put these edges on, I'm gonna go and hook the J-hook in the back. That's gonna kinda make sure everything is centered. And then we'll put those last two pieces on. So same thing, you gotta really kinda compress this down. But this one is easier, at least in my opinion to that front one there. Make sure that's centered. Look at that. So once again, our stitching is in a good spot. Last thing we need to do is get the sides clipped in. Now I'm just gonna run this heating wire under here. I believe it was under this, or it may have actually popped out through here. I'm gonna leave it here for now. We'll be able to easily just kind of pull it through once we put it back on the bracket. And there we go, one seat down. Let's just, oh wow. That is a massive difference. You actually feel the foam like under your thighs here. You're not just kind of flat down. That's how worn out this was. BNF, it's perfect. All right guys, just like that, the bottom's installed. That actually went really quickly. Um, even with replacing the lower foam, it was actually easier to do than when I put the vinyl one on there. 
and this this looks just absolutely amazing. You could tell it's genuine leather now. It's just it's smooth, it's soft. Just comparing it to the vinyl, you can see how just shiny and plasticky that thing looks. The stitching is just spot on. Everything fell in place where I want it. Um, yeah, but with the bottom done, it's time to tackle the back. All right, the back here seems like it's gonna be easier and harder at the same time. I think it's gonna be easier because we're actually gonna kinda of have it on a stand, being it gets to stay on the seat bracket. But I never actually did the back of one of these before, so that's where it might be a little bit difficult. But regardless, first thing we're gonna to wanna to do is remove the 18 millimeter nut holding the seat belt to the bottom seat frame. Next thing I'm gonna do is just unclip the plastic here where the seat belt goes into the seat. Next, we're gonna remove the headrest, so let's just pull this guy up. And then we're gonna to wanna to pull the little plastic covers off of here. And then we're gonna press the buttons in here. That'll pull right out. Now to remove the armrest, there's simply a clip sitting in the frame. Simply remove the clip, this is gonna pop out. So to do that, I'm gonna end up just cutting my cover, being this is getting replaced anyway. So I'm just gonna come right in here There's the clip, there's our armrest. All right, so with all that stuff off, we're ready to start peeling the cover off. Now this is gonna be a little bit difficult. It's gonna be on there tight. First thing we're gonna to need to do is undo the clip that's kind of joined sandwiching both of the seat covers together. Well, you know, the front and the back of the seat. Then we're gonna pull these little clips out on the sides holding these two flaps down. Get that out. We're basically going to reverse peel this off. Now, I'm pulling this cover off, so I don't care what happens to it. If you go and check out Seat Shop's video, they show exactly how you could kind of peel this up and gradually work it off. In their video, they're using two people. And as I said before, it's gonna be a lot easier to do this with two people, because when you're fighting this and you're pulling one side up, the other side's gonna to wanna to come down. Being I'm here alone, I'm simply gonna take some scissors and just cut right through this. And then our new one, it'll just slip right down and go on. But there's really no point in me fighting this. Same thing like the seat bottom. We got Velcro. I actually got my Velcros broken off here, so. My seat back isn't in the best condition, but you should be able to get away with using it. Oh wow, the back, you can see the back really failed hard. I'm just very carefully getting this out of the Velcro because now I know my seat back is a little weak. Well, you know, the cushion, it's a little worn. Carefully just work it over the mechanism for the headrest. And then easy enough, we'll just thread our seatbelt through here. And the way that failed, that actually like burned a hole in the cushion. All right, so before I go any farther, I'm just gonna go and put the uh, armrest clip back in here. And then to reinstall the armrest, we're just gonna pop it in there and it'll lock in place. All right, so the next thing I'm gonna do is re-glue the little piece of Velcro to the seat foam. I just have some uh, high strength 93M spray adhesive that I use for my headliner. And we're gonna wanna spray both sides of this. Final thing I'm gonna do before putting our cover back on is clean this grungy seat belt. So all I'm gonna do here is remove it from the seat. I think that, that might be another 18, maybe smaller. It's locked tight in place. And under this cardboard backing is the whole retractor assembly. 
And that's another 15, we'll just remove that. So what I'm gonna do here is fill up this bucket with some laundry detergent. I'm gonna kind of scrub the belts inside of there. Then I think I'm gonna try to lay them out on the pavement and just pressure wash them. And hopefully um, all that just dark grime will come right out. Now the passenger belt has this sensor on it. I guess this is for the um, seatbelt warning for the passenger. So I'm just gonna leave this kind of tucked out of the bucket here. Just gonna let these soak for a little bit, then we'll whip out the pressure washer. Works pretty good. So I'm just gonna let them hang here and dry. They uh, definitely seem to get clean. Once I hit it with the pressure washer, you can clearly see all the uh, dirt just kind of get blasted out, and they feel a lot softer. They're not like super stiff anymore, where they won't retract so hopefully that issue is fixed hopefully they're you know relatively clean when they dry um the other thing is the little stopper on the passenger belt here this one broke off on the driver's side because of it always hanging down and not retracting i slammed it in the door and that plastic piece popped off so for now i'm not going to have anything on there but i think i could get these on ebay so i'll just have to replace it all right so i got the seat belts reinstalled all i'm going to do now is apply some spray glue around this edge here just to glue it back to the cardboard. I already did this to the passenger side and it worked out beautifully. Now what we're going to want to do is put this on inside out. Basically, we're going to kind of peel it down over the seat. So to do that, I'm just going to reverse this. And then with the cover totally inside out, we want to leave the seatbelt portion in like that because we're going to actually slip that over first and then we're going to peel the cover down around that. So I'm just going to kind of sit this over top. We're going to fish the belt through and now we're gonna start by getting this into position. You can see the first portion is on the seat. Now we're just gonna go around side to side, peel it down over, and then we'll start working in the Velcro after it's actually most of the way down. Once again, you know, take note of the stitching. Obviously you want on the edge of the seat, not over on the bolster. Up here is looking pretty good. We're along the top. Same thing above the seat belt. And this seam here is looking pretty good. Now we're gonna wanna set the Velcro into place. So I'm gonna start on this side, just come up under here, kinda get a feeling for where the groove is. And I'm gonna actually push this bolster out that way and then lock this down so I can kind of stretch it over and it's gonna give you know a contour to the seat. And 
that way, when we release this, you'll the foam is going to want to spring back. And you see it gives us a nice tight bolster. And I am sweating on everything. I apologize. I'm going to have to wipe these down for sure when they go back in. But that looks perfect. Same thing over here. We're going to want to put some tension on this foam. So once again, we'll kind of pull the foam back, slide this in. And that's going to give us a nice tight seam. Just like that. And you can kind of pull this up and reset it as many times as you want. So if you want to try to get some of these wrinkles out, just pull it up, pull it down, and then relock it in. And that'll smooth it out a little bit. All right, so I'm pretty happy with where all the stitching is, um, with how everything is kind of pulled. There aren't too many wrinkles. This stuff at the bottom here is gonna get pulled once we put this clip on. So that's gonna look good. Only thing really left to do is gonna be cut a hole from the armrest. Keep in mind now, you wanna make sure you put that clip in before you put the seat cover on. I put them in as soon as I got the old covers off, just so I didn't forget. All right, so with the seat flipped forward, remember we gotta redo this clip here, and then we have these flaps on the side. My cardboard is broken over here where that pin went through. So all I'm gonna do is use a little more spray adhesive and just glue that down to there. I'm gonna do the same thing with this one because I feel like that's gonna hold a little more secure uh, than the factory kind of clip in the cardboard. And it already went and moved the heated seat wire to the side. Wait for that to tack up again. That's pretty much it. I'm actually very surprised with how easy this was. I thought the back was gonna be a lot more difficult, but I think it actually went on easier than the bottom ones did. So with that done, I'm just gonna go and hook the seat belt back on. I just gotta cut this out a little bit so I can get that to clip in. So for the headrest holes, I'm just gonna feel out where it is. I'm gonna cut a slit in the top of it. All right, so last thing we need to do here is make a hole to pop the armrest on, and then we could just uh, bolt the seat bottom back to the um, frame. All right, so for the armrest here, there's a peg that the armrest rides on. You can kind of see it right there. We're gonna pretty much cut from there to the hole here, just maybe like a little bit of an oval. That way um, the armrest could clip into there and there's gonna be enough room in that track for the armrest to move back and forth. All right, that's basically it. The back's totally done. We have the bottom finished over there. Right now I'm just gonna reassemble the seat and uh, do the same thing on the passenger. Then we'll go ahead and pop them back in the Tahoe.
All right, guys, the passenger side's finished. Both seats are back in the Tahoe. We gotta take a look at these things. All right, guys, here we go. The big reveal. Look at these seats. They literally look like they did back in 2004 and this thing was new. Real leather, the feel is incredible, the smell is incredible, the fit is absolutely perfect. Also the color, spot on with the headrest, spot on with the armrest. Remember we didn't change these because they're the factory vinyl. They had absolutely no wear on them. And um, a lot of, you know, work trucks or people who generally just use the armrest a lot, you might have this all ripped up and needs to be replaced. Um, the seat shop has you covered because they do sell the covers for the armrests as well as the headrests. So if you need them, you can get them. But yeah, as for the color, spot on with the back seats, the old headrest, and the feel of this cushion. It feels like I'm sitting like an inch higher now. The old one was just so worn out, so flattened. The good thing about this though is this Durafoam cushion. It's actually kind of an upgrade over stock. It's going to last longer and it's still comfortable and it's not gonna kinda, you know, go as flat as quickly as the factory one did. So even if you have, you know, not as many miles, maybe you have 100K, the seats are still in crappy condition, you wanna redo them, but you're like, oh, my seat foam's fine, I definitely recommend picking up the foam because even though the covers are gonna make them look new, the foam is what makes them feel new. Getting in here with the new cushion, it's just more supportive and it just feels like a freaking brand new seat. But let's go over to the passenger side. Look at these seat belts. They actually came out really, really good. I was kind of on the fence about whether or not I should replace them, but the, um, the laundry soap with the pressure washer made a huge difference. They actually retract for once. And once again, these seat covers, I couldn't be happier with them. But I will say this now, the carpet, for sure the headliner, those need to be addressed. And I promise we will be tackling them in an upcoming video. But one more thing before we close this out, as I promise you guys, we do have a coupon code. And of course we have to test the seat heaters because before what would happen when you put the seat heater on, the driver's control here, it would come on, it would just flash. We have our seat heater back and I did test it on the way here. It did get warm. So I know a lot of you guys are interested in redoing your seats. So if you go to the seat shop's website and use the code LSX10, you're gonna get 10% off your seat order. As I mentioned, definitely go for the low of foam. Do both the heaters while you're in there, you might as well. And then depending on the condition of your armrest and your headrest, you could really pass on it because if they're in good condition, the color's gonna match perfectly. So you don't have to worry about it. And I definitely recommend getting in contact with them and giving them your VIN because that's gonna make sure that you get the exact color and everything matches nice. But once again, I just wanna thank the seat shop for supplying everything used in the video today. Once again, all these parts are gonna be down in the description as well as a link to their site and that coupon code LSX10. Don't forget to use that because you're gonna save 10%. But once again, that's gonna do it for another Tahoe video. I'll see you guys next week.